first video, we'll take a, a detailed look at the fourth industrial revolution. It is important to look at history so we can better project the future and understand where we stand. You'll see that uh, in the history of humanity, we had a number of important moments where things have been changing drastically. And they've been called revolution, whether they are agricultural revolution or industrial revolution. We'll do a little zoom on the industrial revolution. Some technology called GPT or general purpose technology are technology which having a deep impact on society and economy in the way they are applied across a large number of sectors. They are very prevalent, they are exponential in nature, and they also have the ability to be combined with other technologies. So the first wave of those technologies arise with the, what we call the first industrial revolution, where you can see the emergence of systematic utilization of water and steam, which led to a you know, large evolution around 1780 to 1800. From that first revolution, less than 100 years later, came the second industrial revolution that saw the emergence of another general purpose technology called electricity. And as you can imagine, electricity has deeply revolutionized how we live, how we operate, how we industrialize. Less than 100 years later, again, in 1960, the third in in industrial revolution arrived with the emergence of electronics, internet, and this new wave of technology like mobile technologies, for example, and other associated technologies. This really revolutionized the way we communicate with each other, the way we travel, and the way we you know, live our daily life. Now, very interestingly enough, at an even shorter you know, time frame, within about 40 to 50 years, by around 20, 2010, the fourth industrial revolution started. And that industrial revolution, the fourth, is a very interesting one because not only it has one, it has many different general purpose technologies. And we'll look at those technology that we call frontier technologies. So its, it's, it's first characteristic is a large number of technology which combine together. And the third area is not only it is a physical revolution, it's also a virtual and a digital revolution where not only we're looking at the world as a physical world, we're also looking at the world through a digital lens and how this digital lens, this digital vision of the world is going to overlay over the physical world. Hence the name of a cyber physical industrial revolution. One of the characteristic of that revolution, as I mentioned earlier, is the fact that the general purpose technologies are exponential. So if you look at the bottom of this slide, what you see here is an exponential curve, which is drawing what we call Moore's law. Moore's law is nothing less than the number of transistors that you can fit on a given microchip. And this is a nexus for computational power. And Moore has identified already in the 60s that this computational power and the number of transistors that you can fit on a, on a given integrated circuit is going to double every year, meaning the computational power and capacity is going to double every year and follow an exponential curve. And this has been proven true over the last you know, few decades. Another researcher called Ray Kurzweil, which is now director of engineering at Google, has actually utilized this curve and extrapolated this curve to other technologies and realized that actually this exponentiality is applicable as well to many other technologies. So most of the technology that we are surrounded with are follow following an exponential path. He calls that the law of accelerating returns. And if you look at the top of the, of the graph, you'll see that an interesting historical you know, time frame that between the agricultural revolution and the first industrial revolution, 8,000 years have occurred, right? So it's quite a long time frame. Between the, the first industrial revolution and the light bulb, which is you know, quite a simple you know, invention for us nowadays, about you know, 120 years have occurred. And then between the light bulb and the moon landing, only 90 years have actually occurred, uh, which is interestingly showing us the time frame in between innovation is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking all the way to the last evolution that you can see is the genome sequencing uh, just happened just you know, quite recently for full human genome sequencing. Exponentiality is essential to understanding how technology evolves. A researcher called Asmara that used to be a, a teacher and a researcher at Stanford University realized that there is a fundamental misalignment between how human, we, are perceiving technology and how technology are actually behaving. We've learned during the last slide that technology is following an exponential path. That's the green curve on the, on the slide. But human are thinking linearly, and that's the black curve on the path. 
we keep thinking that you know things have been the way they've been and we just follow this very simple linear path. What that creates is what Asmara used to call the Asmara paradox, is we have a natural tendency to overestimate technology over the short term, but underestimate technology capacity over the long run. So as we you know, currently live nowadays, we think that technology can actually do more than they can really do. And that's what you can see with the disappointment phase. But we are at the inflection point. As you can see, we are here at this inflection point where actually now technology are starting to do more than we can think those technology actually are doing. And that's what this chaos and amazement phase is. So uh, what we do is we urge you to really start thinking exponentially. It is important to actually start understanding those technology not thinking linearly, but thinking exponentially. So you are able to project yourself and really understand the true potential that those technology are actually offering us, not in the distant future, but now. The second element I mentioned, which is pervasive in industrial revolution and general purpose technology, is not only their exponential nature, but also their combinatorial nature. The fact that they can combine with other technologies and apply across multiple sectors of activity. And that makes them very special. So if you look at, at, at this exponential curve on the top left, you'll see the blue technologies. Those are very mature technology like internet, social media, mobile technology. We're moving now from 4G to 5G, clouds, big data, etc. Those are quite mature technology that we apply across a large range of, of, of sectors and activities, including in the healthcare industry. What you can see is in green are the frontier technologies, 3D printing renewable energy, internet of things, cognitive computing and systems, nanotechnology, robotics, genomics, drones are those you know, frontier technology which are coming at a fast pace. And what they're doing is they're starting to merge and blur with many other technology and combine together. And that's why it looks like a spaghetti arrangement because you can combine them in any way you want, making them very interesting but also very powerful in their applications. So if you take, for example, 3D printing plus genomics and molecular biology, you combine them and you will get bioprinting, the ability to print organs and, and other soft tissues. If you take robotics, mobile technology, machine learning uh, and electrical vehicles, you'll get autonomous vehicle. If you take infrastructures, Internet of Things and artificial intelligence, you'll get smart cities. And that's what you can see on the, on the right side are, are those fast emerging technology on the yellow part which are actually combined technology arriving at a fast pace, combining the pre-existing frontier technology. And now we can see area like life extension, so we can really extend life by, let's say, two years, five years, ten years. We may reach a point where we actually reach what we call de-extensions de and potentially drastic life extension. What a number of researchers in the field of longevity have actually qualified as longevity escape velocity which is the speed at which technology in healthcare are evolving faster than the time elapsed. So for example, for one given year, the technology around healthcare is gonna evolve faster than this given year, giving you technically the ability to live forever. So this is, you know, of course, a, a very long term, 100 years, you know, maybe and more from now, but already those applications have immediate potential for healthcare, particularly in digital health, biotechnology and genetics. If you're interested in learning more about those technologies and their application, please check out my other videos on the topic. Thank you very much.